So hey boys and girls, Q here. Yeah, I want to do something a little different today and, and tell you guys a story. Uh, I call this story the perfect motorcycle. In the early 1970s in Utah, my dad bought a Suzuki TS-185 motorcycle. It was an enduro model, essentially a dirt bike with lights and instruments, so it was street legal. We lived in Utah because my father left us in Connecticut when I was 12. Two years later, my mother told me we were moving to Utah where he lived. My parents were getting back together. He wanted to be with me and my three siblings. Ogden, Utah could not have been more different than Wilton, Connecticut, but there we were. And two months later, my dad moved out for good. After that, we saw him on weekends. He worked as a vice president for a sugar company and his office was on the 10th floor of the only tall building in downtown Ogden. He was a handsome man and I believe he lived by the dictum, if you haven't got anything nice to say, don't say anything, because he didn't say much. But a year later he showed up at our house on this motorcycle. His friend Jim Christensen and he went and bought motorcycles at the same time. And the three of us would go on long rides, me on the back of my dad's bike. My dad took me to local flat track races, which were thrilling affairs. And when I wanted to a race, he stripped off the Suzuki's lights and license plate. We stuck on a number plate and we had a motorcycle rack welded to the front of his Toyota Land Cruiser so he could take me to the races. The other riders had dedicated dirt bikes and I only had this Enduro, but I did all right. A year later when I got my driver's license, he basically gave me the bike. The license uh, plate and lights were back on, and I used the bike for errands and for fun around town. I also spent hours and hours riding off-road in the foothills of Ogden, Utah, sliding and jumping the bike and honing my skills. In college in California, I bought a Yamaha RD350, a great bike. I rode that bike from Los Angeles to Utah after school and the collapse of my life. I basically junked that bike. I have no idea what happened to it. I had bigger issues to deal with. When my life restarted a few years later, I bought a maroon Honda CB750 and rode that bike for a year through a Salt Lake City winter. When I had the money, I traded the motorcycle for a sub subcompact car. I sold the car and most of my possessions and moved to Manhattan where I lived for 10 years. Most of those with no personal transportation, just subways, taxis, and a bicycle. I married and divorced and married again. My second wife and I had a son. I had a career. And then 20 years ago in my mid-40s, I bought another motorcycle. And then another and another and another. Until now, I've lost count of them. My dad passed away a few years ago and I keep searching for the perfect bike. It has to be comfortable, it has to please my eye, it has to go on-road and off-road. Is the Kawasaki Versus X300 the perfect motorcycle? It might be. I have my eye on other bikes, always. Maybe I think the perfect bike will transport me back to when I was 17, riding the dirt trails in the foothills of Ogden, Utah. I'm still looking. So let me know if you like this kind of a story, boys and girls. Um, and as always, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And bye for now.